Hello students, I'm now going to do a pop bead model of meiosis. So let's get started. Okay, here I still have a 2n is equal to 4 cell. I have 4 chromosomes here. I can count them by the centromeres. The button's right in the middle. All right, these are replicated chromatid strands. They are identical to each other. The goal of meiosis is the E. Meiosis stands for sex. We're trying to make haploid or gamete cells. During prophase one, remember during meiosis is going to divide twice. That's why we get that Roman numeral after the phases. Meiosis evolved from mitosis, so it, um, it's very similar in uh, structure and function, but it's going to give us different results, So, which is going to be pretty cool. During prophase one, the chromosomes condense. So everything's going normal. This is in germline cells and the, in humans, this is in the testes and the ovaries. Now here's where the first difference happens. In meiosis, the homologous chromosomes, that means the chromosomes that are the same size and that have the same genes. They may have different forms of the genes, different alleles, the same genes are going to form tetrads. They're going to pair up. And this is called uh, synapsis. So homologous pair of one just paired up. Here goes homologous pair number two, and they just paired up. So they are literally on top of each other, forming a tetrad. Now, due to some enzymes, they can engage in what's called crossing over. And they can actually swap alleles of genes. They can swap what I would just have you remember here before we go into genetics is that they can swap segments of DNA. So I'm gonna go ahead and model it. I'm gonna pop a couple beads off here, a couple beads off here, and have them swap. I'll try and go quickly. Couple beads here, couple beads here. Uh, in class, you got really creative and a couple of y'all popped them you know, in the middle, all over the place, right? They can go through different crossing over events, the closer genes are on a chromosome, the more likely they are to be inherited together. Those are called linked genes. Um, a couple of students ask good questions, like crossing over happens between every uh, homologous pair of chromosomes. It can happen multiple times. So that one's been crossed. Now we're gonna cross this guy or gal. Ooh, I'm sorry. Some of the beads aren't the same. I just combine an old set. So this is proving a little more challenging than Mr. Gibney thought. The challenges are good in life. You can always press the speed up button on your YouTube playback. Okay, we have now crossed over. We've exchanged some alleles. The tetrads stay together, and we line up in the middle in the equatorial plate for metaphase. And what's going to happen now, this is another difference. The homologous chromosomes are going to be pulled apart. So the yellow and red get pulled apart. We wanted to say, I'm trying to remember from my previous video, uh, red's mom, yellow's dad. So the mostly maternal one gets pulled to this side. The mostly paternal one here. This time it could be the same, so mostly uh, red and yellow. But remember, it's completely random which way they line up with more maternal or paternal on which side. It's called independent assortment. So let me model that here. This time, red number one lined up on this side, whereas red uh, number two lined up over here. So when they separate, look at the differences you get. So that was a little tricky. That has confused my students in the past. I encourage you to draw it. I encourage you to check out my Google Slides in Classroom. But this is called independent assortment or random assortment of homologs. It is completely random if they line up like this or if they line up like this on the equatorial plate or the middle of the cell undergoing meiosis. For humans, this leads to two to the 23rd 
combinations of chromosomes that can, uh, the way they can be lined up. So at least the over 8 million different combinations. This makes you special. It makes you, you. All right, for any cell, it's two to the n power with n being the number of uh, haploid chromosomes. All right, so now let's, uh, let's leave them like this. We're going to go ahead and we pull them apart during anaphase one. Notice how the new cells, this is like steering a boat, things are backwards. All right, notice how the new cells are each going to have two chromosomes. One centromere, another one, so that's two, one, two. So at the end, it's now going to undergo telophase, and here is one, and cytokinesis. Here is one cell, and students, here is the other cell. The cells are now haploid. This messed students up in class. Um, I, hopefully it has been corrected by now. Haploid, remember, has half the number of chromosomes. This has two chromosomes. This has two chromosomes. So you might say, okay, the goal of meiosis is to make haploid cells, so shouldn't we be done now? Well, we need to separate these sister chromatids. We only need one chromatid in our uh, sex cell because it's then going to combine with another one and it'll give us the proper 46 chromosomes. So now it's pretty easy. It's just going to undergo mitosis again. It can go a brief resting phase. And then in females, while this is happening, this would stop until puberty happens. So this is where the eggs would arrest their development. Now we're going to go through uh, meiosis two. It's just like mitosis. So if they were here and here, they're going to line up in the middle and they're now going to get pulled apart. And so now let's make our four cells. And so here will be one cell. This is gonna to be tough for me to fit in here. Bear with me. Hopefully you're practicing with something at home. Here comes another one. And so here are my four cells. These are not uh, homologous pairs of chromosomes. Look, they're different sizes. They're going to have different genes. Right? This is from chromosome one. This is from chromosome two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Okay, so if I finish putting my strings around, you should see four cells. I need one more string. Oh, no. So there's the string for that one. A little messy, but you can see four cells. Hopefully you can see that they each have two chromosomes. We started with 2n is equal to 4. And now we have n is equal to 2. We have half the number of chromosomes in each cell. So this is great, right? This, this would represent sperm or eggs. When they combine together with a, the, a sperm or egg in the fallopian tube to make a baby, let's pretend it's these, right? So pretend that this came from uh, the sperm and this one came from the egg. They combine together. And look what you have now. It's a thing of beauty. You have, this would be chromosome one. You could double it and then you would have the homologous pair, which would happen during mitosis. And here would be chromosome number two. All right, and we have the, the two, you, the ones from dad and ones from mom. So I probably should have picked some different Colors here, you can imagine it like this. Sorry, I'm going to run out of time to redo this video. So you can kind of imagine like this. This might be a little clear. All right, so that would be maybe red's dad and yellow is mom. So we went from 2n is equal to 4. We did meiosis. We have n is equal to 2. And then we put them together, and now we have 2n is equal to 4. That is the human life cycle. It is the life cycle for many organisms. But as I showed you in class, it's not always that way. Some uh, bees and wasps and ants can do some pretty unique things with haploid, diploid life cycles. 
Okay. There are some organisms that can exist as haploids for the majority of the time. I hope you found that modeling uh, useful and get, keep on studying for your test.